So today I'm gonna to be showing you a really fun and simple card trick that you can just go ahead and show all of your friends and family and they will love it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the performance of the trick. So this trick is completely impromptu, which means we can take the deck and give it as many shuffles as a spectator wants. We can even have the spectator shuffle the cards if they would like to. Um, but we need the spectator to go ahead and select any card. So I'm just gonna spread through here. They can just go ahead and remove any card. Let's say this card over here. I'm not going to look, but I will turn my head away. So you guys can see this is the card that they selected, okay? And now I'm actually gonna have myself take the card and I'm just gonna lose it somewhere in the center of the pack. I'm not quite sure where it's going, but you know, somewhere in the middle. So you can see it's not on the top, right? Okay, or on the bottom. Okay, so it really is in the middle of the deck somewhere. So now I'm actually gonna give the spectator about half the cards to use. We're gonna make kind of a mess on the table here. It's gonna be uh, pretty interesting. So I'm gonna have the spectator say stop. And let's say they say stop over here. We'll give them about half of the deck, just like this. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna demonstrate what I'd like them to do along with me. I'm just gonna take the cards here, just kind of, you know, drop them on the table like this, okay? Just kind of in a random mess, all right? And I'll tell the spectator, you can go ahead and do this as well. So just take your cards, just, you can shuffle them if you'd like to, it doesn't matter, you can mix them up, but just completely drop them down here on the table, making a massive mess of cards on the table, just like this. So I'll try and speed this up, but I just want to show you guys that all these cards are random and they're all just making a huge mess here on the table. So your card is somewhere in here, obviously, because you picked one of these cards, but I don't know which one it is. It could be this one, this one, this one, I don't know. Um, and if I had a blindfold right now, I would take this blindfold and I would put it on myself, or if I didn't have a blindfold, I could just turn my head away like this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and reach in here and pull out your card, okay? So let's see if I can do this right now. Uh, I'm not quite sure, uh, but we'll see if I can. So I'm gonna turn my head away and I'm not quite sure, but I think one of these, um, you know what, I think, I think it might be this one right over here. What was your card? Was it the eight of spades? Hopefully it was. And yeah, guys, that is the trick. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to stick around for the tutorial. All right, guys, so here's the tutorial for the trick that you just saw. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that one. It's definitely becoming one of my favorites to do. It's so easy and it's so powerful and fooling because it just looks so chaotic with the cards all crazy messed up on the table. It just seems impossible how you could somehow find their card. But yeah, once you guys learn the secret, it's very easy to do. I hope you guys enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get right into how this trick is done. This trick is completely impromptu. There's no setup, no gimmicks, nothing like that, no special finger material. <laughs> you could do this with a completely borrowed deck of cards if you want. All you need is a deck of cards and a table. That's probably the most important thing. But once you have these things, you're pretty much ready to go. So you can go ahead, have the spectator shuffle the deck as much as they like. When they're done, all you're going to do is have the spectator select any card. But as they're selecting a card, you're going to be getting ready for the card control at the same time. You can do one of two things. There's two options that you can choose from here. The first option, the one that I did in the performance, is I took the fifth card here as I spread and I sort of took my fingers on it and I just in it like this. And then I just continued spreading the card. So now I have this fifth card from the top just sort of sticking out acting as a little bit of a marker card. So you can do that, or you can also take the fifth card and just keep your finger on it. This is probably the better option. Just keep your middle finger on it. As you spread out the cards, your finger is just gonna stay on that nine of hearts in this case, as you spread out the cards. So now the spectator can go ahead and take out any card from the middle, it doesn't matter. But now when you square up the cards, you're going to be obtaining a break right underneath the top five cards. And you're going to be getting ready for what's called the Marlowe tilt. So as they're looking at the cards, you have your pinky break just like this. What you're gonna be doing is taking these top five cards from your break and you're just gonna be lifting them up a little bit. You're gonna be holding it with your ring finger and sort of the base of your thumb. So you can see now that the back of the cards, it, there's a massive gap between the rest of the deck and these five cards. But from the front of the deck, there's no gap. So if I was gonna move my hand, it would look something like this. So you can see the front is completely lowered, um, but the back is raised up like this. So there's a massive gap. So this is what you're gonna want to be in right here. And you do this as they're looking at their card. So they're not gonna see you doing 
this whatsoever. And when they're done looking at the card, in this case, we have the four of spades, you're gonna ask for the card back. You're not gonna look at it. You can even turn your head away. But now you're gonna do the Marlowe tilt control, which is basically this. You're just going to stick the card in the middle of the deck a few times, and you're gonna tap out some of those middle cards to make them kind of stick out. This just creates more of an illusion like it's going in the middle of the deck, but it's actually not going to go in the middle of the deck because once you've tapped it a few times in the middle, you're gonna remove it and put it in this massive gap right here. But you're gonna make sure it's not going up towards the top five cards. You're gonna make sure it's touching uh, the rest of the deck. Put it as low as you possibly can within this big gap, just like this. And this creates the illusion if you tilt your hand down a little bit and after you do this tapping thing, it really does look like that card goes in the center of the pack. And then you can square up the cards and now you can lower that gap down. And just like that, the cards now, the one, two, three, four, five, sixth card from the top of the deck, and that's all you need to have. Once I do that, I just like to show the spectator the top two cards just to show that it's not near the top. Also, I like to do this for magicians as well, because if the magician does notice that I'm doing the Marlow tilt control, they'll usually think that it's the second card from the top. So I'll show them one, two, and this way they'll see, oh, it's not the second card, so it must be a different card. And then I'll also show the bottom two cards as well, just to be consistent. But once I'm in this position, all I have to do now is give the spectator around half the cards. And you can do this by either just giving them the bottom half of the deck, or you can also uh, swing up the cards, hold a break, and then give them this top half of the deck, which is also the original bottom half of the deck. All you want is you want to have their selection, you know, the sixth card from the top in your possession. So you can just have them say stop and you can just give them the bottom half, it doesn't matter. But once you're in this position, once the card is the sixth card from the top in your hand, you're going to start dropping cards on the table and you're gonna start dropping them randomly, but make sure when you get to the sixth card, so right here is the sixth card, their card. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put it at the edge of the table so that it's actually sort of gonna be sticking off the edge. So imagine my hand is the edge of the table. I'm gonna put the card here so that the edge of the card will be literally almost off of the table. So the card is only gonna be halfway on the table. But now you're just gonna start dropping more cards down like this. And yeah, so now you can tell the spectator to go ahead and start dropping cards as well. All you want to do is just keep your eye on the card that is closest to you, that's halfway off the table. And I know it's not really in the camera's view right now, but if you guys could see, um, it really is the only card that is halfway off the table. So I'm going to lift up the camera just so you guys can see a little bit here. Yeah, you guys can see my setup, but I'll try and show you guys the edge. So right here, you guys can see um, this card right here is sticking off the edge of the table, and that is the spectator's card. And as you're dropping cards down, you tell the spectator to also start dropping cards down. This whole time, you're just looking at the card that is closest to you, their card, because you don't want them to drop any cards on top of it. And if they do, it doesn't matter because you can just move them out of the way later. But once all the cards have been dropped on the table, there's just this massive mess of cards. And now you can take your hands and you can kind of mess them up a little bit. Just keep your eye on their card the whole time. You just don't want to move it off the table or anything. You want to keep their card hanging off the edge of the table because that's how you're going to find it in a second. How to find their card, what you're going to do is you're going to turn your head away or if you have a blindfold, you can put on a blindfold as well. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your hand and you're going to basically put it underneath their card, and then you're just going to scoop it underneath all of these cards. So I have their card hanging off the edge of the table, and basically I'm gonna place my left hand on top of all of these cards to cover. I'm gonna scoop these back, and my right hand is going to grab the underside of their selection, and it's going to basically push everything towards the middle. So now, if I just lift up my hand, I'll have a massive block of cards, but if I was gonna turn <laughs> my hand over if I can, um, you'll see the four of spades. My fingers are totally holding that in place, and all I have to do now is I can just kind of shake these around, I can mess these up as much as I want, um, but my fingers the entire time are going to maintain contact with their selection. So I know where their card is at all times, it's just the bottom card. And once I have a few cards remaining, I can cut the cards um, but still keeping my fingers on it. So right here, this is their card, and I'm still looking away this whole time. So I can just drop some random cards down like this, just kind of flip them over, make it ridiculously crazy. And then once I have a few cards left, I'll just stop and flip over 
their card, just like that. That's basically the entire trick right there. So as you can see, it's so easy to do. It's really, really simple, but it looks really, really impossible because you're just kind of reaching in there and messing up everything and it just looks really chaotic. But yeah, this is just such a great trick to show your friends and family because it will totally fool them. And yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this trick and see you guys next time. Bye.